Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Selling Greenville, your favorite real estate podcast here in Greenville, South Carolina. I am your host, as always, Stan McCune, realtor right here in the Greenville area, providing you tons of content on Greenville and the real estate market in general. You can find all of my contact information in the show notes if you want to just talk about the show, or more importantly, at least for me, if you need a realtor in the Greenville area, I'm your guy. You can find my contact information in the show notes. And if you like the show or if you hate it, if you like me, if you hate me, whatever the case may be, please hit the subscribe button, rate, review the show, comment, all of those good things. Uh, that is the primary way that you guys can support this content and encourage me to keep going with it. So please do that. I really enjoy when I see those ratings and reviews come in. Today, we are going to be talking about data that was published by the National Association of Realtors just a few weeks ago on demographics of home buyers and sellers, among other things, but primarily demographic information. And I found this to be immensely interesting, immensely helpful. Um, and I think that you guys will find it interesting as well. Now, this isn't Greenville centric, um, but sometimes in the show, I will go into more national uh, sorts of things. We look at the Greenville data every month. It's good sometimes to take a, a step back and just look at some of the national data. So I'm going to jump right in. Um, we have about 30 slides that I'm going to be looking at here. So this is a great one to watch on YouTube. If you want to look up uh, at Selling Greenville Pod on, on YouTube, um, you can find it there. But we're going to start right from the top with uh, they broke down all of the different generations of home buyers and sellers uh, that are uh, still here to this day, starting all the way with the silent generation. I'm just going to go through this quickly um, just so you guys have a framework. Here's when all these different generations were born. The silent generation was born between 1925 and 1945. Now they split boomers into older boomers and younger boomers because there's a big difference. Older boomers were born between 1946 and 1954, and the younger boomers were born between 1955 and 1964. Gen X, they're kind of on an island on their own. We don't split them apart. They were born between 65 and 79. Um, but millennials, we do split them up. Older millennials, of which I am considered a part, um, are, were born between 1980 and 89. Younger millennials between 1990 and 98. And Gen Z between 99 and 2011. Now, what we would expect is that basically uh, millennials should be the primary purchasers of real estate right now in the US. And that is exactly what we find. If you combine the younger and older millennials together, you get 38% of home buyers are millennials. 17 are the younger millennials and 21% are the older millennials. But interestingly, and we talked about this before, Gen X is really has been behind the curve in a lot of ways. Um, only 24% of home buyers are uh, made up of Gen Xers. What about boomers? This is where you this is what you wouldn't expect. 31%. So only a little bit below millennials, but 31%, which is greater than Gen Xers and way more than Gen Zers who only make up 3%, uh, but 31% of boomers, 19% younger boomers, 12% older boomers make up uh, home buyers right now. So we've got a, a, a very interesting curve right now where we have uh, basically the uh, 25 to early 40s and the uh, 60s through 70s demographics are the ones that are really propping up real estate right now, whereas the Gen Xers between 44 and 58 years old um, have kind of been left behind, only make up 24% of home buyers. Let's look real quick at household income of home buyers. I'm not going to go through all of this data. Again, if you want to see the slides, you can see them on YouTube. I will publish this on YouTube. Um, but by far, the household income of home buyers is over 85,000. Like before 85,000, it's so it break this data breaks it down a lot of different ways. Um, but we've got less than 25,000, it's only 2%. 25 to 35,000 is 3% of home buyers. 35 to 45 is 4%. So far, so, so forth and so on. Until you get to 85,000 through 100,000, that makes up 9% of all buyers. And then the biggest number is between 100 and 125,000. Again, this is household income. That's 15% of home buyers. 
And then 125 to 150 is 9%. 150 to 175 is 8%. Um, there's a weird little drop off between 175 and 200,000. It's only 5% of home buyers. But then we jump all the way up to the biggest number for uh, household income for home buyers right now is 200,000 or more. That made up 16% of home buyers. So the vast majority of home buyers are making at least 85,000 or more. And really, the vast majority is making at least 100,000 or more in uh, in their household right now. Unfortunately, this is the dynamic. This is what we're talking about when we say that certain uh, generations have been left behind. This is what we're talking about when we say that that uh, housing is the least affordable that it's ever been. You basically have to have a, a household income of you know, basically six digits in order to be able to buy a house in today's market uh, by and large. Now, obviously, there's frugal people out there that don't make as much but don't spend as much. But we're we're talking about on a meta level, that is typically what we're seeing. Let's look at the adult composition of home buyer households. By the way, I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but I'm not going through every single slide the NAR uh, published. I hand selected some of these that I personally found interesting. Um, adult composition of buyers. Um, here's where uh, here's where things kind of get interesting. So we've got. Married couples, single female, single males, unmarried couples, and other, uh, whatever that may constitute. Um, and if you're between, well, let's just talk about all buyers for a second. 59% of all home buyer households are married couples. And what this doesn't specify is whether they have children or not. So 59% of all home buyers are married people. Um, What's interesting, though, is the next biggest demographic is single females. They make up 19% of all buyers. And then you have single males, which are 10%, and then unmarried couples, which are 9%. Um, and this dem this uh, these percentages fluctuate based on the age. And that's to be expected, right? The 18 to 24 demographic, married couples only make 32% of that demographic because not too many 18 to 24-year-olds are married. But what's interesting here as well is the second place is single females. They make up 31% and then uh, of the 18 to 24 demographic and then single males, 20% and then unmarried couples, 15%. I find that very interesting. And this data holds throughout. Single women are, are more likely to be homeowners than, than single men. Uh, but married couples are by far the most likely to be married, particularly when you get to the millennial demographic, uh, 13 to 43, uh, 66% are uh, are married couples among home buyers. And then you've got 13% uh, single females, 8% single males, 11% unmarried couples. So couples dominate, right? Um, it, it, and this is, again, a function uh, to a certain extent of uh, housing affordability or inaffordability. Because what you've got is, You've got a lot of um, a lot of dual income households now that are, and that's essentially the requirement in order to buy a house is that you have multiple incomes or you have a very very high income earner relative to the rest of the population. All right, moving right along, number of children under the age of eighteen residing in in household, and so this broke down how many children in a household between none, one, two, or three or more, and again, interestingly. None, no children under the age of 18 residing in the household dominated this number. Out of all buyers, 70% of home buyers had no children uh, ultimately residing in their household. That's an insane number. Um, and it's over 50% for every demographic except for the 34 to 43 demographic. That demographic, 35%, it's still a majority, uh, uh, not a true majority, but a simple majority. Um, are no children, 35%, 21% one child, 28% two, and 16% between 34 to 43 years of age have three or more. Uh, but the rest of these are all particularly with the older population to be expected. They're not going to have too many children. Um, but pretty much all the other demographics have a huge front number of no children and then much smaller numbers for, uh, for children, with the only exception being the 34 to 43 uh, age demographic. Homebuyer education, 
I found this interesting. So they broke down buyers by uh, whether the, you know they have a high school diploma, not even a high school diploma, associate's degree, bachelor's degree, et cetera, et cetera. The largest number on here, 31% of home buyers have a bachelor's degree. Um, uh, 26% have a master's degree. So over half of home buyers have, um, and, and, and there's two additional categories as well that are higher education. Some grad work is 7% and then doctoral degrees, 7% as well. Um, so 71% of home buyers have, uh, have a bachelor's degree or greater. Um, and so there is a direct correlation between the level of education that you have and, and your ability to purchase real estate. Now, doesn't mean that you can't, uh, but again, this is tied into heavily into the type of work that people have as well. Typically, better education results in better pay, which then results in more of an ability to purchase real estate. What about first time home buyers in an age group? 70. Uh, well, uh, let me talk about this for, for a second here. Um, of all home buyers, and I found this to be very interesting, of, of all home buyers, 32%, basically a third of all home buyers uh, for uh, when this was sampled were first time home buyers. That's insane. 75% of those aged 25 to 33 naturally were, were first time home buyers, but 44% of those between 34 and 43 or first time home buyers, huge number. Um, and again, those 44 to 58 years old, 24% of them uh, were first time home buyers when they bought between those ages. Um, so again, we're seeing first time home buyers get older and older and older uh, as a result of housing affordability. Okay, what are the primary reasons for purchasing a home? Um, th this is a, a few little things that I found interesting. Desire to own a home of my own. 26% of all buyers uh, gave that as the reason. And, you know, that's a very American thing, right? I want to own something. I don't want to borrow something from somewhere from someone else. Um, so a lot of people, they just want to own a home. They want to say, this is my home. Um, in second place was 12% that said a, a desire to be closer to family, friends, relatives. So these are people that, you know, perhaps because of the limited options when you're renting, um, they they would rather buy, they have the ability to buy and be closer to people they care about than they would if they rented. Um, third place was a desire for a larger home. We've talked about this before. When you're renting, um, you ha only have so many options when it comes to the the, um, the homes that you're going to purchase. And, uh, and so uh, oftentimes they're going to be smaller than homes that you could buy. So 11% of all buyers had the desire for a larger home as a reason uh, for them purchasing a home. Um, and then we have a, a bunch of other reasons, change of family situation, uh, retirement, desire for a smaller home is is up there as well. And these fluctuate based on uh, based on the demographic. So the older population, the older you get, the more the desire to be closer to family, friends, relatives, becomes a bigger reason. So 31% of those age 69 to 77 want are, are purchasing a home to be closer to family, friends, or relatives. And 28% of those 78 to 98 are doing that. And 18% of those 59 to 68. So um, what does that come out to? Uh, we got 49. So it's coming out to what? About 77% of those that desire to be closer to family, friends, or, or relatives are those at least um, basically 59 years or older. Um, and so there's a, a lot of interesting things. Again, if you're if you're watching on YouTube, I'm not going to get into all the weeds. We got to push through here. Um, but you can see the charts on there. It's 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 quite interesting. Um, why uh, why new and previously owned homes were purchased? OK, um, so th this is kind of a clunky way of wording it. Typically, we say new and existing homes, right? New construction versus previously built construction that has already been lived in. In, in this NAR data, they're calling it new versus previously owned home rather than the traditional new versus existing homes, whatever. Um, so why, do, why are buyers buying new homes? Well, 45% say to avoid renovations or problems with plumbing or electricity. 26% said the ability to choose and customize design features 26% as well, the amenities of a new construction community. Um, and then 
a variety of other reasons. Those that are buying existing homes or previously owned homes, 38% um, that they found it to be better overall value. Similarly, 36% said a better price, 23% more charm and character, and 18% simply a lack of inventory of new homes. I'll take a sip of my uh, LaCroix here. So I don't start uh, coughing and sneezing for you guys. Um, <clears throat> but those are reasons why, again, if you're thinking about purchasing new construction versus purchasing something exist existing, here are some considerations. And these, I feel like, definitely hold true for the Greenville market as well. And by the way, just a, just a plug as always, I help people all the time purchase new construction. It's one of my specialties. And so don't feel like you can't utilize a realtor for new construction. I, I do this all the time. The builders will will pay to have a buyer agent. Most The vast majority of builders like buyer agents. Um, and so keep that in mind if you're looking at potentially new construction in the Greenville area. Um, purchase price compared with asking price. We talk about this in the Greenville stats all the time, but I found it interesting to see on a meta level, um, what are what is the NAR seeing? So um, the top number on here was 31% of buyers paid 100% of the list price, very interesting number. Second place, 27% paid between 95 to 99%. And in third place, 20% paid over list price between 101 and 110%. Um, and actually even more than that because 5% paid more than 110% of list price. So 25% of home buyers are paying over list price. 27% are paying slightly under list price. 31% are paying exactly what list price is. And then 18% paid for less, uh, paid 94% or less uh, than what a home was listed for. So very interesting. If you are in the market for a home right now, overwhelming odds are you're going to pay at or above list price still. Um, and um, if, you know, basically what 45% of home buyers um, have or 40, 45 to 44% um, are potentially paying below list price, but the vast majority of those are still paying over 94% of what a home is listed for. Size of home purchased. Um, the vast majority of homes purchased right now are um, between 1,500 and 2,500 square feet. So 1,501 to 2,000 square feet constitutes 28% of all home buyers, and 2,000 uh, square feet to 2,500 constitutes 26% of all home buyers. Um, and um, and so that's that's the sweet spot, right? 1,500, 2,500, and that, that makes sense. It's it's not super shocking. Um, that is the sweet spot where you can get three to four bedrooms and, and two to three bathrooms, which is what people generally want. The median square footage was 1,860 for all buyers. Um, and really the, the distribution of uh, if, you know, again, if you're looking at this data on YouTube, the distribution holds constant. They broke it down based on all the different age groups, but it, it remains the same basically pretty closely for all of these that 1,500 to 2,000 is the top number. 2,000 to 2,500 is second place. And then third place might be either 2,500 to, to 3,000 or 1,000 to 1,500, just kind of depending on the demographic based, based on the um, the age of, of the home buyer. Your home was built. 28% of homes uh, in this survey were built between 1987 through 1962. Very interesting. 20% um, from, from 2003 through 1988. 20% also from 1961 through 1919. Um, and then the vast majority of... of so, so to add that up, that was 68% of homes that uh, that are being purchased right now were built between 1919 and 2003. Um, so that is uh, really the the sweet spot right now. People are, I mean, in, in Greenville, we don't have a whole lot of homes that are selling from 1919. We see them every now and then, um, but most of the oldest homes in Greenville that, uh, that are being sold, typically 30s or 40s is the oldest that we typically have. Greenville's not a super... Old city, relatively speaking, most of Greenville. Um, and so, so the vast majority that I see are between 1940 and yeah, I, I think the early 2000s is uh, is pretty accurate for our market here. 
Characteristics of home on which a buyer compromised. I found this very interesting. Most buyers have to compromise. Now, 26% of buyers said they did not have to make any compromise. Well, lucky you. Because 74% had to make some sort of compromise. 33% compromised on the price. 26% on the condition of the home. 23% on the size of the home. 19% on the style of the home. 15% on lot size. 10% on distance from friends or family. 13% on distance from job. Uh, 8% quality of neighborhood, 5% quality of schools, 2% distance from school, and then 8% not listed. Um, so this goes, I mean, I see this all the time. Buyers are having to compromise somewhere. And the the three, four, the, the top four things on here are exactly, and, and really the top five things are exactly what you see most common. The price, the condition, the size, the style, and the yard size. Those are the things. So most buyers, when they come in, they think, hey, this is my budget. This is what I'm looking for. By the end of the process, they've had to stretch that budget a little bit. They've had to reconsider some other homes and some other areas, perhaps not in perfect condition. And that is what, what just buyers are having to experience right now in this market. Expected length of tenure in home purchased. Um, I found this fascinating. Because people have no idea, clearly have no idea how long they're going to live in a home because 45% of all buyers thought that they would live in a home for 16 or more years. And that is so, I, I think I've got a slide in here later that shows just how uh, misleading that is. Very few people are going to live in their home for 16 or more years. Most people move uh, you know, within five years of having bought the home that they live in. But it's interesting, buyers think that they're going to live in a home, generally speaking, a lot longer than they do. 22% of response uh, of respondents, respondents said they expect to live in a home 8 to 10 years. Again, still high. Um, 8% thought 11 to 15 years, high. 4% 6 to 7 years, high. Um, now, we're getting into more realistic numbers. 13% uh, of respondents thought 4 to 5 years. 5% one, two to three years and 2% one year or less. Yeah, don't don't buy a home that you plan to live in for one year or less. That's generally speaking, not a good idea unless you plan to turn that property into a rental. So what I take from this is when I talk to buyers who say that they are purchasing their forever home, which would put them in that 16 or more category, I'm just gonna smile and nod. Length of search. The number of weeks that all buyers on average search for a home was 10 weeks. Great number. That's a, a great little factoid. Two and a half months is standard median length of time that it takes for someone to, to buy a home. Um, and the median number of homes viewed was seven. So it typically takes two and a half months and about seven homes that you see before you finally find one and are able to get one under contract that you like. How real estate agent was compensated since uh, realtor compensation is a big talking point right now. I figured I would I would throw this in there. 52% uh, of real estate agents were compensated by a seller, 25% uh, by the buyer, and 12% jointly between buyer and seller. And, and uh, of that, 76% were paid a percent of the sales price as opposed to, there are a few other options on here, 90% of respondents didn't know uh, exactly how their agent was compensated. So that's not great. Um, sacrifices made to purchase home, okay? What kind of sacrifices did people have to make in their lifestyle in order to become a home owner? And uh, the number one answer on here was, Actually, 56% said they did not have to make any sacrifices. So bravo to over half the market um, is, is fitting their home purchase within their means. So that's great. They, they're they essentially, that this is where they're having, they're making sacrifices on the type of home that they're purchasing versus making lifestyle sacrifices. I think that's great. I think that's a, a very wise decision if you're a home buyer. That being said, 31% uh, opted to cut Spending on luxury items or non-essential items, 23% cut spending on entertainment, 18% cut spending on clothes, 12% um, <laughs> canceled vacation plans. Man, that's that's a, a sad a sad day. 
Uh, 9% paid minimum payments on bills. Ugh. Uh, 7% earned extra income through a second job. That's, that's sad um, if you have to get a second job to buy a house, but I, I get it. Um, particularly if you're younger, that could make sense. 6% sold a vehicle or decided not to purchase the vehicle. And uh, 5% moved in with friends or family without paying rent um, in order to purchase a home. So some interesting sacrifices. Buyers who have student loan debt, this might have been one of the most shocking things out of, out of everything that I looked at here. 23% of all buyers have student, of all home buyers have student loan debt. But here's the part, that, that's not that crazy. Less than a quarter of buyers have, uh, have student loan debt. But what blew my mind was this. All, they ran this data all the way up through age 77. And every demographic had at least a small portion of buyers that had student loan debt. E even the 69 to 77, per, uh, 77 age year old buyers, 4% of them had student loan debt. Now, I don't know if that's, you know, maybe grandparents paying student loan debt for their grandchildren or maybe for their children. I don't know. Uh, but 24% for age 44 to 58 have have student loan debt. That for sure, um, I would uh, I would say is them paying off their own debt. 35% of my generation, 34 to 43, has student loan debt. 41% of those 25 to 33 have student loan debt. So student loan debt is still very crippling right now, really hurting, you know, at a time when when affordability of, of housing is at all-time lows. Um, to, to have student loan debt on top of it is really, you know, is really challenging for uh, for people right now. Um, buyer's view of homes as a financial investment. 82% of all buyers said that buying a home is a good financial investment. Now, of that demographic, 44% said better than stocks. You might disagree with that, um, but not everyone trades or, or is effective at trading stocks. Um, and so I think that that's, a, or that's important there. 28% said about as good as stocks. 10% said not as good as stocks. Um, but apparently still believe that it's a good financial investment, even if it doesn't perform as well as stocks. 5% said not a good financial investment, and 13% said they don't know. Um, so the 5%, they're not buying a home as an investment. They're buying a home as a lifestyle improvement, and, and that's to be understandable as well. Um, in the Greenville area, they're going to find that it's probably, unless they completely overpaid when they bought, it's still going to end up being a pretty good investment for them because we still see home prices uh, rising in the Greenville market. Age of home sellers. All right, we're going to transition to home sellers here. Age of home sellers. 26% of home sellers were the younger boomers, age 59 to 68. 23% Gen Xers, 44 to 58. Um, older boomers then were in third place, 69 to 77%. And then older millennials, 17%. So um, what is this? Uh, we got 49. So 68% of home sellers are between 44 and 77 years old. So those are those are the people selling the most right now is uh, mid 40s through late 70s. Um, and uh, as far as the household income of home sellers, it's pretty similar to when we looked at the household income of buyers. The largest number on here, 200,000 or more. Right? If you're if you're making 200,000 dollars or more, you real estate you have a lot of options at your disposal, right? You can sell investment properties, sell, you know, rental properties, sell your, your primary residence. You might have multiple residences, who knows? 200,000 or more, you know, for some people might sound like a lot. It's not necessarily a lot, right? If you're at that closer to 200,000 end of the spectrum, not a whole lot. If you're in the more category where you, and it's a lot more, then obviously you have a lot more options. Uh, the second place on here was 100,000 to 125. They made up 15% of home sellers. 125 to 150 made were made up 10%. 150 to 175, 9%. 175 to 200, 5%. So the vast majority, again, similar to home buyers, the vast majority of home sellers are making 100,000 or more. And that's because home sellers typically become home buyers. So there's going to be a, basically the Venn diagram between sellers and buyers. Um, is very, there's a ton, a ton of overlap between those two categories. Um, adult composition of home seller households. So again, we're going to look at married couples, single female, single male, unmarried couple, or other. 
Again, the vast majority, 65% of home sellers are married couples, 20% are single females, 8% are single males, 5% are unmarried couples. Very similar distribution as what we saw with home buyers, because again, they tend to be very similar. Number of children under the age of 18 residing in home uh, seller household, again, very similar. 75% of all sellers have no children in their household. 10% have one child, 2% have two children, 10%, sorry, 10%, one child, 10%, two children, 6%, three or more. And um, where we find the most interesting data is now, not just the 34 to 43 demographic, which was the big one for home buyers, but the 25 to 33 demographic also is kind of interesting. So the 25 to 33 age demographic, 33% have no children, but 33% have a child, 23% two children, and 11% three or more. Um, if you're 34 to 43, 26% have no children, 20% one child, and 33% have two children, 21% three or more. So the vast majority of home sellers between 25 and 43 have children, but that drops off big time once you get into 44 to 58. 71% of Gen X um, it, it does not have children residing in their household, which is, you know, kind of crazy if you think about it, right? If you're 45 years old, um, you know, and you have typically you would expect that they have children in, in their late 20s, early 30s, um, but Gen X did things a little bit differently, okay? A, a little bit of a unique demographic. Um, and um, and so as a result, they don't have as many children as some of the other demographics traditionally have. Education of home sellers. Um, again, vast majority of home sellers have a bachelor's degree, some grad work, a master's degree, or a doctoral degree. So bachelor's degree, 30%, some grad work, 8%, 24%, master's degree, 7%, uh, doctoral degree. And then the rest, uh, less than high school, high school diploma or associate's degree makes up 32% of uh, of the remainder of home sellers. Size of home purchased compared to home recently sold. I really like this, uh, the way they did this. So they, they took the size of a home purchased and then compared it to the size of the home sold. And, all, and so we can basically uh, reverse engineer whether sellers are moving up or moving down in terms of, of home size. And the majority of sellers were moved down. There is a minus 200 square foot difference on a meta level uh, between what was sold and what was purchased. So the average sold home was 2,000 square feet and the average purchased home was 1,800 square feet. Now, um, the, demogra the age demographics 25 to 33, 34 to 43, and 44 to, 40 to 58, they are all stepping up. They are all buying, uh, for the most part, larger homes than what they sold. But because of how active boomers are in this market, and the boomers and silent generation are all purchasing smaller homes than what they're selling, because the boomers are so active right now, they are bringing this whole number down to minus 200. Um, and I find that to be absolutely fascinating. Um, this will flip. Right when mortgage rates Im improve, go down. If and when uh, they improve and go down, and uh, millennials and Gen Xers and Gen Z are able to be more active again, we'll see this number flip back into the positives. Uh, but for the time being, um, boomers are really controlling things a lot more than than they typically would, um, and that's reflected in this data. Primary reason for selling previous home: thirty three percent want to move closer to family or friends. Interesting, because that, that, that's not exactly what uh, the number was for home buyers. 13% um, said the home is too small. 10% said that they had a change in family situation, marriage, divorce, et cetera. 9% neighborhood has become less desirable. 8% job location. 9% home is too large. 8% moving due to retirement, et cetera, et cetera. Long story short, the vast majority are moving because they want to be closer to people that they care about. And that number goes up as they get older. So um, of, of respondents, uh, basically 44% of those aged 78 through 98 are moving, are selling in order to move closer to family and friends. 35% of those 69 to 77, uh, same thing. Um, and 28% of those 59 to 68 
um, are, are wanting to move closer to family or friends. Um, homeless too large is a, is a, a response that is also directly correlated with age. So there's over 59 uh, disproportionately are, are the, the highest numbers on here uh, wanting to move because their home is currently too large. That's what happens when you become empty nesters. Um, same thing with moving due to retirement, heavily weighted towards the, the older demographics. Um, there's also one on here, upkeep of home is too difficult due to health or financial limitations. Um, also very weighted towards the older demographics there. Tenure in previous home. Um, I found this to be interesting. The median length of homestay is 10 years, okay? Um, but, um, and again, this goes back to what we were looking at with home buyers. A huge portion of the home buyers thought they, they'd be in their home for 16 years or more. Well, how many home buyers actually stay in a home 16 years or more? It's 36%. So a, a, not a, you know, that's basically a third, a little more than a third of home buyers do end up living in a home for greater than 16 years. Um, but the largest number on here, believe it or not, is actually 21 years or more. That's 25% of uh, of sellers. Um, and again, it's because of the, the boomer demographic really skewing these stats in a lot of ways. The second highest number was four to five years at 14%. Um, no shocker there. I've already said that's what we see most commonly among uh, demographics that aren't that older population. Usually what we see is people eventually, you know, settle down once they become empty nesters or close to empty nesters. That's when they finally settle into their forever home, more often than not. How about the number of times asking price was reduced for a home se seller? 68% of sellers did not reduce the asking price. We we talked about this recently on, on the show. Uh, we looked at the Greenville data. 19% uh, of sellers reduced the price once, 7% uh, reduced it twice, 4% three times, 2% two, uh, 2 four or more. So most sellers are still not having to reduce the price, um, but a healthy percentage are are still, you know, basically a third of sellers are, are having to reduce the price on their home. Incentives offered to attract buyers by number of weeks home was on the market. 77% offered no incentives. 9% um, offered home warranty policies, 7% assistance with closing costs, 6% credit towards remodeling or repairs, 3% other incentives such as a car, flat screen TV, et cetera. Man, I, I want one of those. I want one of those uh, where I buy a house and am and, and given a, a car as an incentive. Let me be one of those 3%. 77% uh, not, not having to make any uh, incentives or concessions. Last slide, and then we're done. Did the seller use the same real estate agent for their home purchase? Um, again, very interesting data. 46% of sellers used the same agent as they used when they purchased the home. 54% used a different agent. Fascinating data uh, to me as a realtor, right? I, generally speaking, would hope that my clients who, who use me when I help them to buy a home would use me when they decide to sell. Uh, but less than half of uh, of sellers have done that. Now, th this is also interesting, is that the younger generation is disproportionately more likely to use the same agent. People talk about the younger demographic not being loyal. Well, that's not true here. Ages 25 to 33, 66% of them are more likely to use the same agent. 34 to 43, 57%. And then, and then that curve reverses once we get to 44 to 58%, only 48% of them are likely to use the same agent that helped them buy their house. And then uh, between 50, ages 59 and 98, basically between 37 and 38% of those in the uh, boomer and silent generation demographics um, are using the same agent that helped them to buy the home. So very interesting data there. Um, I think probably a lot of this has to do with you know, uh, not just not necessarily a lack of loyalty among the older generations, but they probably just know a lot more realtors, right? So they have so many options at their disposal. Maybe they used, you know, a random realtor to to buy the home, you know, maybe a, a nephew or something like that. They were just like, you know, I, I didn't really like that experience. I'm going to use a different different agent when I sell the home. Or perhaps they went to the just the the uh, the listing agent when they bought the home. They went directly to the listing agent 
and then later decided, you know, that's not who I want to to sell my home when I go to sell. Um, so it's a very interesting data there. I hope you guys found that to be as interesting as I did. Um, if you have any questions about any of that or any thoughts, please let me know. I'd love to hear from you guys. My contact information is in the show notes. If you need to reach out to me for any of your real estate needs, please like, rate, review, subscribe, all of those good things. And we will talk again next time.